and welcome to GIS Programs. One of the very important application of GIS is land use, land cover change detection. And in order to do that, you have to classify the image with respect to land use and land cover on temporal basis. So image classification can be done using two methods, different types of methods, supervised and unsupervised. So in today's tutorial, we will see that how you can classify the image using supervised classifiers. Okay, so today we will see that how to do supervised classification using maximum likelihood supervised classifier in ArcGIS. So for that, let us launch our ArcMap first. So let us start using the Landsat satellite image. Now, as you can see in my art catalog that I have uh, a Landsat image. So when I opened the Landsat image, I got all the bands from B1 to B11 as it's a Landsat 8 image, which has 11 bands. So when I do any type of classification, what I usually consider is uh, the mtl.txt file because this file has all the bands in it so this one is a pretty big file let us open it fine so here it is now let us go to the properties of it and click on the key metadata and yes we can see that all the bands are together except the thermal bands so all eight bands are here and um, now if you click on to the sources you can see that uh, eight bands are here with uh, 16 bits pixel and zone 44. Okay, now let us start with the uh, processing. To start with the classification, we need image classification tool. So here is the image classification tool. But in order to get this active, first you have to click on customize and then click on extensions and tick the spatial analysis in the extension list make sure that this is spatial analysis checked before we start the image classification now here is a classification tool um, first we have to select the image which is a raster file and there are three bands so here in front of us so if you want to change the band combination, you can do so by clicking onto the properties and then symbology and then you can select the combination of your choice. The best FCC combination for classification is near infrared, red and green. So here it is. So I selected that. Now let us see uh, what is there in this image. Find usually in this combination, everything that is highlighted in red represents a healthy vegetation. And as it is a false color composite, so we can easily get to know what we are looking for. So in this um, classification, I want to classify the image into four major classes of land cover, that is water, agriculture, forest, and urban settlement. So what exactly supervised classification is? So let us talk about it a little bit. So in case of supervised classification, there is an algorithm running behind where we as a user give training samples to the system and algorithm evaluates itself on the basis of this. So we are going to collect some training samples and for that we need to go here. Yeah, so this is actually your training sample manager. So we will start with forest first and uh, for that we have to select a shape. Now that shape can be a polygon, can be a rectangle, can be a circle. So I personally prefer polygon. So okay. Now let's zoom into the forest. We know that a pretty dark red shows that it is a deep forest and some pinkish red will show. Uh, agriculture but sometimes it is really tough to draw a line in between agriculture and forest but uh, in that case what I usually do is take the help from Google Earth to see what the image is now so it really helps in identifying the object uh, here I am taking samples for forest you can take big samples, you can take small samples, you can take as many samples as you want. The more samples take, um, you are going to collect, more accurate 
your image classification will be so for more accuracy you should take approximately 40 to 45 samples for each land cover so just try to focus on uh, whenever you take samples that you just draw these samples and it will reflect on your training manager and it should be evenly distributed throughout the image so that it should not be concentrated on any specific area and try to take areas which uh, sometimes look very ambiguous so that the algorithm does not get confused while differentiating between agriculture land and forest so take uh, as much samples as you can combine them together and show them as forest so this is what we will be doing so this image is taken at the time when there is not much of the cloud cover so although this image is very good uh, but somewhere there are a few clouds but that is pretty okay we can go with it you can really really zoom in and take the samples at pixel size as well it depends um, how accurate you want so I'm taking code samples as I just want to show you the technique right so here we are collecting few more okay so I have taken 12 samples and now I will select all of them together and click on merge training samples so they all uh, combine to one and I will give a color code to it. So as uh, it is a forest, let's give it a green color and change the class name to forest. Now similarly, I will do it for other classes as well. Now let us do for water now. Okay, in this particular combination of FCC, the water bodies are pretty much clear because it is all blue. You can take uh, quite a good amount of samples and it won't be much confusing sometimes what happens the water in any particular area get uh, dries up or really shallow or maybe because of the growth of many microorganisms water color becomes green so again in that case it becomes very difficult for the system to determine but here the technique which I am using for determination is just my visual interpretation so as we know that remote sensing have seven interpretation techniques like shape, size, texture, color, tone or pattern. So I'm using the interpretation keys to determine the object here. So we call it as visual interpretation through human eye perception. So as these images is very clear, very prominent, we can be sure they can but uh, you know there can be human error of course but it's more towards accuracy uh, because sometimes you literally cannot go to the place to get the accuracy done so here we okay so here we are over with the training samples for water uh, we will repeat the same process, select it all and combine them together and rename the class name as water and give a blue color code to it. Now the next one I am looking for is the urban settlement. Sometimes it is really difficult to find urban settlement because Landsat images um, has the resolution of 30 meters now which is a big area. So let me look for some habitations here. Okay, so here, here I find, let us look for some habitations. Mm -hmm. Okay, here I find one. Okay, so here I find a human settlement. Okay, in this band combination, uh, the settlement area usually highlights in sign color. So you can cross check them using the Google Earth as I have already told you before. That is the best way. So looking for an appropriate training sample for urban settlement, you really need to have a bird's eye because it is sometimes really hard to find. 
so again i'm telling you that try to select your samples evenly throughout the image so i'm looking for more urban settlements Okay, so not much of the settlements are uh, here in this image, in this particular area, but still I'm trying to look for more. Okay, here I get one more. And uh, okay, so let us look for a few more. here it is fine so once you select the samples for the uh, all the urban settlement again you have to repeat the same process where you have to select all the samples and then merge them and rename them as urban so I've merged them rename them as urban and uh, if you want to change the color code you can change if you don't want to change the color code it's okay so visual interpretation comes with experience so uh, as when i was a student even i find it hard to identify the object on the satellite image and next is agriculture so here is the image in this image i can see very dry patches maybe because it's a winter time uh, winter time image so let us find some agricultural land. Mm -hmm. well, like the, the image of the winter season, it is a little hard to find the agricultural land, but still we can see some small, small parts. This look like a mountain area. Uh, still have some growth. I don't think this image has much of the agriculture. Uh, it is really It is really time consuming sometimes, but yes, I love to look at these images and work on it. Uh, sometimes you will find agricultural land in the foothills. Okay, so I think uh, here we find. Mm -hmm. So let us look for a few more. No, it's all. We do have but uh, as I told you that during the winter time it is very difficult to identify the uh, agriculture area mm -hmm. so here we have okay okay so I think that this much samples are sufficient uh, let's, let me scroll a little bit okay fine so um, let us merge them and uh, rename it and give an appropriate color coding so let me give uh, okay I've changed the uh, urban to brown and uh, agriculture to olive olive yellow or olive green color fine so now what we have to do is we have to save our training sites as a shape file so we have to make it as a shape file so that uh, we can edit it in future whenever required so i just i'm just save saving it with the name uh, soup 14 and save okay. now we have to create a signature file so this is the most important step of the supervised classification for that you have to click on the last icon saying create a signature file so this is the last icon we'll click on it and let us save it as again sup 14 and usually the signature file uh, has the extension of .gst 
right so now let us click on save once your signature file is saved then you have to click on classification drop down arrow at the top so my signature file is saved now i will click on this uh, drop down menu of the classification uh, arrow of the image uh, classification toolbar so here you can have several uh, options of classification but uh, i have selected maximum likelihood classification so here is a new window of maximum likelihood classification now this is the most accurate uh, classification method so that's why i've opted this one so once you click on this particular option you have to select this image on which we are working and uh, here you need to input the signature file yeah then i'll just select my signature file and then select the location for your output file wherever you want to save it so provide the name of your output raster of your choice so i've created a folder and now i will put the name of my output raster uh, for example i want to save it as supervised now save now reject fraction will remain zero okay and uh, no other changes are required i just have to uh, just click on ok and then wait for the results So it's processing. Okay, so here we got the results. Uh, shows that the maximum likelihood is successful. So let's go to the table of content as all the colors are looking different. So the value one here is the forest cover. So we will change the color again. We will do it for others as well, one by one. So this is for water, for urban settlement and for agriculture. Okay, so here we go. Now this is how we do the supervised classification. Now you might get confused with the numbers which are uh, written here like 113, 23, 31. So in that case you can change them by going on to properties and then uh, under properties under symbology uh, you will find this option symbology uh, unique values. So here you can select values instead of count and then you can label your classes from here. right okay so this is all done and now you can see this green part here outside the image okay this is actually the black portion of the original downloaded landsat image it can be removed and i will be uh, publishing a video shortly showing how to remove this portion uh, this is your supervised classification i hope you like the video if yes please do subscribe to my channel thank you